Hi everyone, so at the end of my first day in Armadale here for intensive school and the day was pretty much full of different lectures going into uh, different parts of ecosystem rehabilitation so it gave us an introduction to the unit, uh, why we do it, how we do it, you know, where, different case studies, that sort of thing. There was also two guest speakers today from different areas, so the first one was from Ivor Grounds and he is doing and has done habitat rehabilitation uh, for native fish in the Murray River area and his study was Murray Cod so they had been really really overfished and now they're working on bringing them back and getting the population to increasing. The second one was John Lemon and he has done some really cool things and he's got his own consulting, environmental consulting uh, business to give people advice and specialises in you know, re rehabilitating uh, lots of bushland, woodland areas. So he has done some work with koala rehabilitation down in New South Wales, uh, Gunnedah, so a bit south as well. And he was really, really interesting to talk to. And there were some things, you know, we are losing our koalas in Queensland, but we are also losing them throughout their whole home range. So there's many areas that are also losing them. And I wasn't exactly aware of what was happening, but he told us of a drought in 2009, roughly, and it was a year and a half long drought. And in a matter of three weeks, they lost so many koalas that... It hasn't really actually, you know, they haven't come back. So 25% of their koalas were lost within a matter of three weeks. Because of the drought, they had two heat waves. And the, the climate isn't just adjusting as quick as the heat and the drought. Um, he said he saw one tree that had like six koalas in it, which is something you wouldn't normally see if it was a... A healthy area for koalas to be in so he said that was nine years ago that they're not there as much as what they used to be so we definitely are losing them there's climatic factors but we're not helping we are adding to the problem so the more land we're taking away the more that we are losing our koalas so that was really interesting to hear him talk about his work and I've got his business card so I can um, look a bit more into his papers. He said he's going to send me a few things as well of different research and reports that he's done on the koalas in that area. So I'm really looking forward to being able to read some of those things. Different areas be really good to know. Different, you know, areas down in New South Wales. What could we do in Queensland as well to be helping our koalas and really improving our habitat rehabilitation <coughs> of these areas? So that was really cool um, and then in the afternoon we just split into groups and went over different assessment pieces so we've got to do a prac report, we've got a field trip in a few days time to go to Tamworth and do um, some agroforestry and looking at different uh, sites and different levels of rehab so uh, discussing just what we're going to do and how we're going to study that and then on my way home back to the colleges I saw a koala in a tree it scampered up this tree really quickly because there was a, a person walking past with their dog and it was in Elm Avenue one of the main really busy roads uh, to get from the colleges to the uni so he scampered up there really quickly and I jumped out of the car and I ran over and I was watching watching uh, he seemed pretty like quick to get up there and then he kind of watched that dog go past so there is koalas known in uh, the uni area uh, there's a few residents so I'm going to check in the morning to see if he's there or if he's moved on and I hope he's moved on to a gum tree instead of an elm tree but I was super super excited that I got to see um, one of the koalas here so that was like my really awesome part of the night <clears throat> Okay, so I will talk to you tomorrow.